Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So what have we got here? Well, I got a couple of gadgets that I wanted to share with you. They kind of do the same thing. I have SDRs. You probably have one or two as well. And I have a really good antenna for my SDR. I have a diamond discone antenna that receives outstanding. Um, most of what I listen to is the county trunk system, which is up at 860 some odd megahertz but I listen to other stuff on the antenna. So I don't necessarily want to move the antenna around here and there. I might want to have two different things I want to monitor at one time, maybe something on UHF or HF, VHF, whatever, without having to change connectors on radios or change antennas. And the easiest way to do that is with something called a drop amplifier or a multi-coupler. I have an example of each here. As near as I can tell, these things are almost the same gadget, really. So first we'll talk about the drop amplifier. This is old. Um, I don't know, this is probably 30 years old. I've had this in a box of spare parts. It's a, a cable TV distribution amplifier. That's the other word that I've heard this called. Drop amplifier, as in you have multiple cable drops that you're amplifying. Um, this has F connectors on it, and it's made for splitting your cable television signal to four separate outputs, four separate TVs. This gadget here, let me hold this up, and I don't know the brand on this. I couldn't really find this on the internet anywhere. The labeling doesn't really give a brand. It just says four output VHF, FM, UHF, 10 dB amplifier, and this runs off 120 volts made in China, and it's a sealed unit. We can't, we can't really open it up. But this is designed for you to plug in your input cable from the cable company here, and then run coax to your separate televisions so you can maximize your signal to, to different TVs. If you use a passive splitter, there is some signal loss with a passive splitter. So typically these have an LNA built in, a low noise amplifier that boosts the input signal by some dB amount when you plug it in. So you can essentially send the signal as clean as it gets when it comes into your house out to your four TVs at that same level or slightly higher. I had two separate SDRs running DSD+, one working with a control channel on P25 and one with the voice channel on P25. And then I plugged in my SDS100 scanner to one of these other connectors and had it scanning a, a different system at the same time. And it works beautifully. This is rated, as you can see, for fi uh, 50 to 900 megahertz. And I assume that means 50 megahertz, which covers UHF, VHF, FM band. It also, I have not tried this one on HF. So if that is 50 megahertz, which is what I believe that is, it's not going to work very well on HF. It will be... Um, there's probably a low pass filter to cut out all the ham frequencies. So they're not even trying to uh, do anything with those, which typically would not come over CATV cables anyway. So that's why this is made the way it is. That's this guy. This is called a drop amplifier or a CATV amplifier or a distribution amplifier. Any of those three terms will work and they're pretty much interchangeable. So that's this guy. You may have noticed we have another gadget up here. This is an MFJ 8504 uh, dual antenna quad receiver multi-coupler. Now this works it's very similar. I don't, I don't know that I would call these two things completely interchangeable, but for all intents and purposes, they really are. Uh, the difference is the frequency range on this is much wider. This covers from 330 kilohertz, somewhere around there, up to 850 megahertz. So this doesn't cover quite as high as the sure enough drop amplifier does, but it does cover all of the ham bands. The difference is also this has different connectors on it. So this particular model, an MFJ sells three different models. This has two inputs. There's our ground for our station ground, and then four, up to four outputs. This runs on 12 volts, so you can run this off of a battery or your 12 volt power supply for your radio. Works the same way. 
Now, the difference also is this, uh, you can turn this guy on and off and it has a green LED to give you a warm, fuzzy feeling when it's sitting there on your desk. Other than that, it really uh, hooks up the exact same way. The antennas, it comes by default. There are jumpers inside. We'll pop the cover off and take a look inside. By default, only antenna one is gonna work. By default, it only puts out to port one. Uh, once we get inside, there are termination jumpers on the other three ports that if you're going to use them, that's, it says it'll work, but we recommend you pull the termination jumpers out. So I assume that's throwing 50 ohm impedance across these across these ports. And then there are other options for this as well that there are not for something like this. So the options from MFJ for this guy, there's an AM filter, there's a low pass filter, there's... Um, several filters and we'll take a quick look at, at the the page on mfj's website so that's that's the basic difference it works the same way they both do the same exact thing in true mfj style there was only two screws that have to come out and then the cover just lifts off and we are inside so the first thing i wanted to point out is right here on t4 t6 and I'm leaving these upside down and backwards. T6, T4, and T5 are the termination jumpers. You'll notice there is not a termination jumper on this guy because he's active. Based on filters and uh, some other jumper choices that you have to make, and that gets into reading all the directions and we're going to skip all that, I can enable a second port uh, for an input antenna. So you could have multiple antennas running at one time and split out amongst four SMA outputs. Uh, there's our power switch right there and then the rest of the circuitry that's inside this thing. So that's it. There's just there's not a tremendous amount to this thing inside other than the uh, active circuitry. The other thing that that is the difference between these two, these run about 50 or 60 dollars on Amazon 45 to 65 somewhere in there. This is 169 in this base configuration from MFJ. This has no filtering. This has, as I said, low pass and AM filters, and there's a couple other options uh, that you can add to this as well. We'll look at that in a second. This provides 10 dB of gain, which it says clearly there. It's not marked on the MFJ, but on their webpage, it says this provides 30 to 35 dB of gain. Uh, if you wanna run multiple multiple receive only you cannot transmit through these either one of these if you want to run multiple receive only radios off of one antenna and again i have a disc cone that's super wide banded from dc to daylight pretty much so something like either one of these is ideal um, especially this one because i can tune hf on this i bought this about the time i dug this out of uh, the junk box and I've been meaning to do a video on these for a long time, and it's just been sitting in the to-do pile. All right, so I've got this hooked up. This is the MFJ device hooked up at the moment. And I know this screen is super busy. This is an eye chart of a screen. Uh, but I wanted to point a couple of things out. First of all, we are tracking a P25 system right now. I have two SDRs working on this. These are the low-end SDRs, the $25, $30 dongles off of Amazon from RTL SDR. And over here, this frequency display, this spectrum display is our control channel. And then over here is our voice channel. And this only comes active when we're ass assigning a voice channel to listen to. So this, this one screen here, this little piece up here in the corner is one SDR and this is another SDR. Corresponding windows beneath each, this is the voice channel event log. And over here on the left is the control channel event log. And being this is a P25 system, so it's telling us all the radios that it sees and the radios come on and go off and change towers and so on and so forth. And then here are, is our control channel activity. But the point that I'm making here is that we are, we are actively using two SDR radios on one antenna right now at this time. And this is on the MFJ device. Here is the MFJ device here on their website. And you can see there are three models and you can get the different modules and filter boards that go with the device. Um, and these filter boards will work for any of them. The only difference in these devices 
is whether it has filters pre-installed and then what kind of connectors are on the back. So, so this gives us our options for the different uh, 8504 devices, a 30 megahertz high pass module. The one that I have is this guy, the 8504. Well, I have the 8504S for SMA uh, without any filters. So this is the exact one I have right here at the bottom. This has no filters in it. So you can get this with a notch filter, the AM notch filter. There's a low pass module. There's a 1.7 meg high pass module, a 30 meg high pass module. Uh, so those are, are the different options. And these options are all plug and play with the three different models of the 8504. Here's the, the basic specs. This says we have flat gain less than three dB variation from 300 kilohertz to 850 megahertz. Uh, 30 to 35 dBm output, up to two inputs and four outputs on this guy. And then using filters, you can split those input ports and output ports and let you run different bands on each of the antenna ports. Uh, there's our optional filters, band reject, band pass, low pass, or high pass. BNC for the antenna inputs, SMA output standard. This runs on 9 to 15 volts DC. Here is a good picture of the board up close. These are the termination jumpers right here. So if you're not using a port, you're supposed to have these jumpers on. By default in this configuration here, which is what I have, this is the only input port that will work for an antenna. And this is the only output port that is already ready to go. The termination jumpers are only for ports two through four. Now, I will tell you, let's go back to our other screen, that in looking at this, let me move that window out of the way, and let's take a look at this window right here. Well, it looks like it's settled down. Maybe it's because the SDR is warmed up. Oh, no, there it is. I'm getting a lot of errors, um, and I'm losing sync on the P25 data channel every so often. I don't think this works as well as the cable TV amplifier did. And I'm going to hook up the cable TV amplifier without touching this screen. And uh, we'll take a look at that. But I was, I had this running last night for hours and I was not getting this kind of errors and literally nothing has changed. I've just moved the wires over from the cable TV amp to this particular guy is this is a typical drop amplifier distribution amplifier. And here we go. We have this guy for, for, $55. And this is a powered one. This has a power supply that runs over an F connector right here. And then this is our antenna. And then it goes out to TV. This guy covers, it looks like 54 to 1 gigahertz and 5 to 42 megahertz. But this is, this is typically what I have. Uh, cable TV channels all run within those frequency ranges. Let me disconnect the MFJ multi-coupler and plug in our CATV amplifier and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so you can see here we're back up and running and I'm still seeing some errors, less errors than we had before. And if we move that screen out of the way, you will notice that our signals up here are much stronger. We're running two SDRs right now. We're feeding it from one multi-band discone antenna, the Diamond. Now I have this muted so that we don't, uh, we don't have to hear it all. I think we're getting a much better signal now. I still see a fair amount of errors coming in, but we're also receiving a whole lot fatter signal up here than we were. One SDR is on the control channel over here, and then this SDR on the right side up here at the top, and this window, this is our voice channel. And so when he plays a channel that I don't have locked out, then the voice channel pops up with the spectrum display of that particular channel and then plays the audio for it. I think, in my opinion, that were I to buy one of these today, I would not buy the MFJ model. I would buy a CATV amplifier. They cover almost the same frequency. Now, if you want to do HF, this the TV amplifier typically is not going to work because as we saw, this particular one doesn't really cover that. Well, no, it does. It says it covers 5 to 42 megahertz and 52 to 100. So this one does. The one I have does not cover HF frequencies.
Uh, this is $55 on Amazon. I, I don't know if this is a good one or a bad one. This is just the first one that came up on my search. This is one third the price of the MFJ one. And to my unscientific eyeball, I'm getting a whole lot less error messages and a whole lot more signal out of this TV amplifier that I probably bought at Walmart 30 years ago. I mean, literally, this thing is that old. So if you're going to get one of these, I'd recommend you try this. Now, keep in mind, whether you buy this one for 55 or you buy the MFJ one and put in all the filters, you can put filters in line. There's multiple ways to do that. So you don't need to buy the expensive MFJ ones. The other thing is you're not transmitting on this at all. So there's no real danger to your SDRs in any way. Um, this thing is an amplifier. That's all it is. There you go. Either that one or this one. Either one seems to work. I think the uh, TV amplifier works better. Guys, that's all I have for this video. I appreciate you stopping by. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day. 73.